guys, Jambies. Welcome back to my channel on this very cold Friday. Oh my god, it's been raining, it's been gloomy. Trying to compete with the rain here with the noise and the lighting. I hope the lighting will be decent. So as you can see from my title below, I want to share some top 5 lessons I've learned as a mom so far. I hope they'll be helpful to you in one way or another, so stay tuned. Lesson number one, and by, by the way, you may see my little one hovering around here, don't get distracted. I know he's cute, but focus, eh? Focus. <laughs> so lesson number one is um, trust your instinct. Let me shock you, babies come with a manual. It's called maternal instinct and it will always guide you on what you need to be doing and or not doing for your baby. And I know we get a lot of advice from our moms, from our mom friends about childcare, which is great because uh, you get to learn a lot of cool stuff. But always remember babies are different. Each baby is different and motherhood is not a science. It's not an exact science. Everyone has their experience. Everyone goes through their own journey, which is never the same. So trust your instincts. What works for one baby may not necessarily work for the next baby. So this is where you need to listen to your maternal instinct. You always have that strong feeling that you should be doing something or not doing something. And just because you got it from another mom friend does not make it really fit for your baby, I suppose. Just because it worked for their baby doesn't mean it will work for your baby. Babies are different. Trust your instinct. It is your manual. It is your guide on your child's health care <laughs> or general care actually. It is your guide to your child's care. You will get a lot of advice you will ask for a lot of advice you get a lot of unsolicited advice as well but use what you feel is right for your child yeah because that that feeling is strong you know what i'm talking about that feeling is strong so trust your instinct your baby need actually the best way to say this is no one knows what's best for your baby as well as you do I will leave it there. No one knows what's best for your baby as well as you do. Trust your instinct. Take advice, but trust your instinct. It should always come first. Lesson number two, which will bring me to a very hilarious story. Lesson number two is babies are stronger than they look. <laughs> and I say this because I remember when I first had Kiran in that first few days i'm not even talking of okay yeah maybe even in a few weeks after that when i first had kiran he felt like he could like the most delicate not even an egg an egg is not that delicate like i felt like i could just break him just by holding him in the wrong way you know and obviously there's a way you're supposed to hold your baby for their care but that's not what i'm talking about babies are a bit stronger than we no. <laughs> I remember when I had Kiran, I had that fear of am I holding him right? Am I putting him down right to sleep? Is he sleeping in a proper position? And I'd keep checking on him every maybe five to ten minutes. I'd probably not sleep at all. When he was a few days old, I don't think I would let myself sleep other than night time when I'm just too tired, <laughs> too tired to stay up. But let's just say i even remember we were talking with my oh my god i don't even know what to call her let me call her a friend we were talking with a friend uh, who's also a mom about those first few days when your child is uh still pretty newborn first few weeks so we were talking about those first few days and how you know, when your baby is sleeping, when they are a few days old, you can barely tell if they are breathing because they are so quiet. 
They're so quiet and the movement is so... You know how when an adult is breathing, you can see their body moving when they breathe. Anyway, they're so tiny. Even their breath, their body doesn't quite move as such because they're so tiny. And remember oh, she I... said something that when her baby was a few days old, she doesn't always go near the face, near the nose, just to check if he's breathing. And I, I, I just laughed inside because I had been doing the same thing. Like I'd look at him and he's so still and he's so tidy, there's no movement, there's no noise coming from him. And I just have to go and check. Is he breathing? Yeah, he's breathing. They're good. They're good. He's breathing. So, yeah, that, that first few days is very nerve-wracking it's nerve-wracking but the good news is your baby is stronger than you know they're not as delicate as we imagine they are they can survive a lot so have this your baby is stronger than you know lesson number three is don't be too hard on yourself mama don't be too hard on yourself i know as a new mom we have i had let me talk about me not generally i was I was pumped full of hormones obviously because breastfeeding and all this and I've just had a child and I was very emotional, very over the top, <laughs> over the top emotional, I think that's the right word. And I remember there's a time I had an issue with breastfeeding from one side, I could only breastfeed from one side because of, let's just say I couldn't breastfeed from one side for medical reasons. For a few days so at this point i was very hard on myself because i felt like i was in a way failing my baby who was just a few weeks old i kind of felt like i was failing him in a way and i remember i even cried about it i even cried tears because i'm only able to breastfeed from one side and this i've had from quite a number of moms. We tend to be very hard on ourselves when we can't uh, do something or we feel like we're not doing enough because we always feel like we're not doing enough for our kids, for our babies. You feel like there's always more you can do. But if you're taking care of your baby properly, you're giving them proper care and you're loving them, trust me, you're doing enough. Don't be too hard on yourself. What your baby needs is proper care, feed him, change him, clean him and all that and love him. Your baby needs love. As long as you're providing care and love, you're doing enough. You're doing good. You're doing a good job, mama. So don't be too hard on yourself. And it's hard, but try. So lesson number four is your baby will let you know when they're ready for the next step. Like my baby wants to be lifted right now. <laughs> you know how, uh, okay, again I'll talk about my experience because like I said these lessons are from my experience. My experience was how do I know when my baby is ready to hold up his own head because you know when they're young their necks are a bit uh, not strong. They're not very strong so they can't hold up their own head until after a couple of weeks and they can't sit down obviously until a couple of months into it so i was wondering when do i know each step at each step i'd be like so when do i know my baby is ready to hold up their own head or how do i know they're ready to sit down because there's no much as you read the developmental milestones and all that that's very exact on how to figure it out and how do I know my baby is ready to crawl, ready to eat, ready to talk, to walk but the thing I've seen with all those stages that we've been through obviously is that your baby will let you know your baby kind of always lets you know when they are ready for that step so they'll start showing you the signs so just watch out you'll see what your baby is doing they're kind of trying to sit up then they are kind of ready to sit on their own or they are trying to move about they are ready to crawl and so on your baby gives you signs and they will be very apparent I promise you <laughs> they will be apparent oh apparent no pun intended 
parents. Lesson number five and the final one is it's okay to have some me time. It's okay for you to take some me time. Uh, I know again as a mom you're very involved, you're very uh, detailed, you're there for every single detail of your baby's life but it, it's okay to get some help from family, from your maybe your husband, your baby's father or your family, whoever is around, get some help with the baby and take some you time. Take some personal alone time, get refreshed, get some rest. It's crucial for you and it's good for both you and your baby because happy mom, happy baby. If you're not happy, if you're tired, if you're restless, your baby can read that and they'll become restless as well which will make that even harder for you. <laughs> so if you're tired, if you're restless, your baby can read that off you and they will project the same. They'll be restless and, um, and cranky as well which will make things even harder for you. So take some time rest, take some me time rest, refresh. It doesn't even need to be that much time, just a little bit time for yourself. It's okay to take some time for yourself. It's good for you, it's good for your baby. Because your baby can read your emotions, they can read you, they can feel what you're feeling in a way and they'll project that back to you. So take some time. Happy mommy, happy baby. And that's all I had to share for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did give it a thumbs up, if you did give it a thumbs up, if you can relate, let me know in the comment section below. If this has been helpful to you, let me know in the comment section below. What was your journey and what did you learn as a mom? Let me know in the comment section below. Maybe we can help a few moms out. So comment, leave your feedback, like the video, share it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. We're having a lot more awesome videos on 2019. So subscribe and I'll see you next time.